Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Regarding the memo, why is it okay for Republicans in the House to release a Republican memo and not at the same time as a Democratic memo to give the American public a full picture, or at least both sides of the argument behind this underlying intelligence? Mano, what's okay is to follow the process as the process is laid out, and that's precisely what is happening. I would main, mind, remind you that the Democrats tried blocking the rest of the members of Congress from even having access to the memo that the majority wrote. Yesterday, the majority voted to provide access to the Democrats' memo. The process is this. It's an 11G process. You all <laughs> probably used. reported on it, which is a memo gets released to the broader members. They read it. Then you go and scrub to make sure that neural sources and methods are being compromised. And then you go through the process of releasing it. The, the majority's memo already went through that process. That process is underway. This memo that we just got popped on us yesterday is now going through that process. And I would just tell you, unlike the Democrats on the Intelligence Committee who voted to deny access to this memo to the broader members, Republicans supported doing so. Devin and so now, the yeah, Devin actually made the motion. So now it will go through <laughs> that 11G process just like this other memo did. Why not hold that? Why not hold that back and release it at the same time? Yeah, yeah, as Kevin was mentioning, um, the chairman went to the FBI to, to, to go through the memo to make sure that we were protecting any sources and methods, and we are confident that we are. None of that work has been done on this new memo that no one has yet read, but the Republicans voted to allow the rest of the members to read it so that it can go through that process. But why not hold back? It's, you had, you've asked enough. <laughs> Why not hold back? Why not release them both at the same time? Uh, the answer is because Trump was always telling Devin Nunes that he would never release the Democrats' memo, so feel free to vote for it. Feel free to vote it out of committee. Feel free to let everybody look at it. Uh, but uh, we're never going to release it. Good evening. Uh, this evening, the House Intelligence Committee voted to release the minority response to the majority's uh, memo, the Nunes memo. Um, we think this will help inform the public of the many uh, distortions and inaccuracies the FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign in the summer of 2016. Right. That's what happened. And then they got a warrant on someone in the Trump campaign using opposition research yeah. paid for by the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign. That's what this is about, and it's wrong, and it should never be done. It's it misleading done. in its timeline. It's misleading in how it mischaracterizes what Andy McCabe said. It's misleading in how the application was put together, and it's also misleading in so many omissions. But the whole point here is not to be accurate. Uh, the point is to be misleading. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. <laughs> and when you look at that, and you see that and so many other things, what's going on. Uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, but you're incapable of feeling the shame that you should feel. Oh, there was a Friday news dump. Did you see that? That was like an amazing dump, a big dump, a damn big dump. And uh, for me, it was happy hour. Oh, news junkies, did you love Friday? Friday was amazing. It was so good. I mean, you know what? I really do believe that uh, every journalist who is assigned to cover the Trump White House must, uh, you know, must change their schedule because everybody dreads Friday night. Everybody dreads it because, you know, TV programming goes into weekend programming. You get lock up raw. You get your, uh, you know, uh, 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 you get your part timers in there. It's just it's not, a, you know, so let's rearrange our schedules. Let's take Mondays and Tuesdays off and work through the weekends because, listen, if the president fires uh, Rosenstein or if the president fires John Kelly or if the president fires Mueller, God help us all, it will happen at six o'clock on a Friday night. There is no question in my mind. So last Friday night we had uh, 
dueling memo wars. We had, uh, you know, a, an announcement from the White House that they would not release the Democratic uh, rebuttal memo to the Republican memo, which alleges falsely that the only reason why Carter Page, this is all for Carter Page, that the only reason why Carter Page uh, was granted a FISA warrant by the FISA court, those judges appointed by the chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, that's who appoints the FISA court justices. Okay, so uh, the Republicans on the FISA court are appointed by the Republicans, uh, you know, Supreme Court chi- uh, uh, Chief Justice. They granted a uh, a warrant to, you know, to, to wiretap Carter Page after Carter Page had left the Trump administration. That's a very important little factoid. That's number one. Number two, based on not the dossier, but based on intelligence that was gleaned from the Australian ambassador who had a juiced up meeting with one George Papadopoulos in the UK where George Papadopoulos said, I got emails from the Russian government and, you know, they got dirt on Hillary Clinton and they want to give it to the Trump administration and they're trying to arrange a meeting between Trump and Putin. And the ambassador went back and told the Australian intelligence, the Australian intelligence shares their intelligence with the United States. And uh, so they shared it. And that's why there was a counterintelligence investigation opened. It has nothing to do with the stupid, stupid dossier, which, by the way, 80 percent of it's been corroborated. And now... Oh, my God, there's a story about the PP tape. Oh, wait till you hear this story. But anyway, Friday night, they dumped the news that the president is like, no, I'm not going to release the Democratic memo. I don't feel like doing it. Uh, It will jeopardize sources and methods. Now, let's just review one thing about the Republican memo, which is just, you know, fabrication. And, of course, we're not allowed to see the underlying material, so we have no way of judging What the, you know, all we know is the last paragraph of the Republican memo clearly said that the investigation was launched based on Australian intelligence, informing us that the Trump campaign had been informed through one George Papadopoulos who sat on the, uh, you know, he was uh, one of the foreign uh, foreign advisors, uh, not foreign advisors, but a foreign affairs advisors uh, that was picked by Trump. Remember George Papadopoulos, excellent guy that was picked by Trump to do his, uh, uh, you know, um, foreign policy stuff. So. But Trump allowed and said at the uh, I mean, he hadn't even read the Republican memo when he gave the State of the Union. And yet when he was leaving the State of the Union, he was asked by some, uh, you know, crazy Republican uh, House members whether or not he's going to release the memo. And he said, oh, yeah, 100 percent. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And he hadn't read it. Let's release the memo. How's it going? How's the kids? I mean, honestly, uh, he goes, yeah, I'll release it 100 percent. But he hasn't read. He hadn't read it yet, but he knew he was going to release it. Now, how did he know he was going to release it? Because Devin Nunes told him what was in it. In fact, I think Devin Nunes put in it what. Trump wanted to be put in it, and the Democrats wrote a rebuttal, and he doesn't want the rebuttal out there, and so he's gonna. So that 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 was part of the Friday night news dump, okay? And then on top of it, you had another White House staffer resigning for domestic violence, uh, a speechwriter named Sorensen. Uh, he resigned quietly on Friday night. Now, and, and then you had the number three at the Justice Department, the person who it would fall to if, if Trump did the Saturday Night Massacre, let's say he did exactly what Nixon did, and Trump went ahead and fired uh, Rosenstein, okay, and then uh, fired, um, was looking for uh, somebody instead of Rosenstein to fire Mueller. Well, of course, Jeff Sessions is recused. And so that's why we're down to the number three. Jeff Sessions would be the number one at the Justice Department, right? Because he's the attorney general. Then you've got Rosenstein, who's the uh, deputy. Then you've got uh, Rachel Brand, who is the number three at the Justice Department. So if Rosenstein would get fired, it would fall to Rachel Brand to fire Bob Mueller. So instead of being put in that position, 
all of a sudden, this woman who's number three at the Justice Department, who's worked there her entire professional life, who's the highest ranking woman in the Justice Department, who's next in line to be the deputy attorney general and then to perhaps be the attorney general of the United States, has all of a sudden given up on her chosen career path and has instead decided to go to Walmart. They made her an offer she can't refuse. Now... I nobody knows she hasn't said yet you know uh, whether or not she's getting out but there is no one left there is no one left in the justice department there is no there's not even an original person i mean the, the entire uh, trump cabinet is turned over the entire justice department has had you know nothing but turnover 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 now you've got kelly they're trying to say that after Reince they picked kelly kelly was this uh, you know uh, he's a jarhead you know he's going to bring uh, and now they're talking about firing kelly they have uh, there's news stories on friday night that uh, you know trump is making phone calls to tom barrick and other people saying you know if it's should come open if we should get rid of Kelly you know would you be interested Barrick says no but uh, you know and Kelly's got like nine different stories about what happened when he saw Porter's uh, wife's photographs and and of course Don McGahn knew that the FBI had done a background check on this uh, you know Porter dude who beat two wives and a girlfriend and uh, that the girlfriend had personally called Don McGahn and told Don McGahn not just about how terrified she was and she was trying to break off her relationship with Rob Porter because he was violent to her too, but that she had spoken to wife number one and wife number two and they had both confirmed the exact behavior. Don McGahn, the White House counsel. So he knew, Kelly knew, because the FBI spoke to Kelly a year ago when they first did the interviews. Rob Porter was never able to get a, a, a clearance. Now we're talking about, you know, get, on Friday I was going, well, there's 14 people in the White House that don't have security clearances that are seeing the most sensitive, uh, you know, information that the United States possesses, not to mention Trump, who couldn't have gotten a security clearance if he were applying for a job in the White House and wasn't the president of the United States. He wouldn't qualify for a clearance. He's got all the keys to the kingdom, right? Now we find out there's 40 people at the White House who have no security clearance. I mean, this is just an amazing administration. It's it's just despicable and it's scary and it's horrible. And it's it's just, you know, I mean, and every Friday at six o'clock, you find out Kelly changed his story 19 times. Rachel Brandt has resigned. Uh, this Porter guy's got another compadre, uh, you know, a guy named David Sorensen, who just quietly, uh, you know, resigned for domestic violence. Now, I, I mean, today, President Barack Obama was on the stage with Michelle because their official White House portraits, which will be displayed at the Smithsonian, you know, the Hall of Presidents, they, there's all these portraits of presidents, they unveiled uh, their paintings. They, they showed the, the world their paintings today. And I just, I, you know, I just can't even imagine if Barack Obama, just one little thing, okay? Just one little tiny thing. What if Barack Obama had paid a stripper $130,000 during the election of 2008 or 12 to go away, to stay quiet, would he still be the president of the United States? Would he, would he have you know, been a two-term president? Would he have been president for more than five minutes in 2008 if that story had come out? But yet the stories about Donald Trump and 20 women accusing him of sexual assault, endorsing Roy Moore, who was not only accused of sexual assault, but against minor children. And now you've got Porter resigning and Kelly lying about it to cover up for Porter. And the reason we're being given that Kelly lied from those who are saying they know Kelly lied. Like, I mean, they had this terrible, terrible uh, briefing by this temporary dude, Raj Shah, the deputy communications guy who just can't lie as well as Sarah Huck uh, Honey Boo Boo, who dyed her hair today, by the way. Uh, it was tragic, uh, the, the, the press conference he had, where they admitted, oh, Kelly did put out two different statements, and one was after he saw the photo. Well, why wasn't the FBI enough for him? Or or is the FBI just, you know, a totally, uh, it's a plot, it's a plot. If you ask the Republicans, the only thing Kelly did wrong was he relied on the FBI's background check. I mean, this is just insane. It's off the hook, this attack on law enforcement, this attack on all the systems and procedures. Wow. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.